Now here's another exercise for you. Um, what uh, these are called eccentric circles and uh, about half of you in the audience will not be able to um, accomplish this correctly, but um, I want to have you give it a try. So what this does is it works on um, getting the two eyes to see depth. And so if you have a pen or a pencil or just the tip of your finger, I want you to put it in front of your computer screen and, um, and place it at the lower end of the card. Um, and the, your finger or the pen should be halfway between you and the pictures that are on the screen. So when you're looking at the tip of your finger, you should notice in the background that there's those two big circles with circles in between. As you bring your finger closer to you, you'll see in the background without looking at the background, but you just notice in the background that those circles um, come together and form a third circle in the middle. And, um, and when you get that third circle in the middle, then um, you'll see uh, some depth perception. And did any of you get that? Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> And so you'll see um, in this next one, this gentleman is um, looking at these types of uh, concentric circles straight ahead. And he's um, seeing this depth. Now, if the eyes are not um, coordinating and focusing in this free space to make that depth, um, the, the circles go flat and he won't see that. Um, we're having him stand one foot in front of the other, so it's challenging his balance. And then we're testing his peripheral awareness by throwing a ball at him while he's doing the same thing. So it's a central peripheral test that involves balance and coordination. Timing and cognition. Now this is another um, exercise where we use those prism lenses um, in order to uh, reestablish um, fixation and peripheral awareness. So this, um, we have a ball on the string that acts like a pendulum. So it's easier to tell um, speed and location and the ball won't hurt them because um, they can, uh, if it touches them, it'll still just be hanging from the string. So we use this ball and the string a lot in um, vision rehab therapy. Um, the patient is having to alternately touch the, um, the ball and try to keep it um, going straight back and forth. And again, that alternating movement um, uh, stimulates both sides of the brain when she alternates. But then we, we make it harder by having her on a balance beam and also using the prism lenses. Now she, um, what we do is uh, we put um, a, the prism in one direction. So it moves the ball, the percept of the ball to be in a different place than where the ball actually is. And we see how quickly her brain can adapt to that. Then we move the lenses to where now the percept of the ball is in a different spot. Um, and what it does is um, make the, uh, the brain having to adapt quicker to um, changing visual uh, scenarios. So let me show you how she's doing this. And it may look easy with somebody that's um, watching, but it's actually a pretty difficult task. And um, we first start this task with um, just wearing the prism glasses standing and then sitting and then um, with one foot in front of the other and then on a balance beam. Um, and then we may start adding it to where she has to do it to a metronome or um, uh, count backwards by twos um, so that there's a cognitive demand. And there, we start to what we call loading the system to where the visual part becomes an automatic skill um, and not something that they have to work so hard in order to um, visually process what they're seeing. 
So here is a, um, a patient who has um, what's called uh, left neglect, which is where he um, can see things that are on the left side and on the right side, but um, things that are on his left side are not as, uh, he's not as aware of them as he has on things that are on the right side. Um, so here is Dinah. Skin, because of your injury, you have a left field floss. This exercise is designed to help you and make sure work on uh, you scanning into your left field. I have alphabet blocks on the table. Most of them are on your left side. What I'll be doing is showing you a letter. And as quickly as you can, I'd like for you to find the letter with your eyes. And I'll be watching your eyes to make sure that you are indeed looking at the correct letter. Are you ready? Sure. Remember, as quickly as you can. Kill him. Okay. Okay. Don't forget we have lots of blocks on your left side as well. Very good. On your scan. Now, um, here's the same gentleman that we saw before. And this is his, he's now advanced quite a bit in his vision therapy program to where now he's doing those eccentric circles, um, converging his eyes, also being on a balance board. And he's doing where he's having to notice what these big numbers are on the side. Um, and it's like five, seven, 12, 11, 12, two, six. And he's using two flashlights, one with his right hand, one with his left hand. And when um, a number is called out, he's having to um, shine the flashlight on the number, but using his peripheral vision while he's still trying to get the three dimension in the center. Then he's switching to the other hand for the next number, then the other hand for the next number. And you'll see there's this ball that's hanging from the ceiling. It's moving in front of those circles. So it's like when you were getting that 3D image, somebody's doing this in front of it. And the reason why we do that too is consider driving. Driving, we have to have um, depth perception and um, movement on the side, um, being uh, aware peripherally. But also we have windshield wipers. So a windshield wiper, every time it goes back and forth, it can disrupt the eye teaming ability. And so this is um, multi-sensory um, training for him. Pretty impressive. Um, now we went to a different type of um, balance board that this one has a ball underneath it and um, so the balance is forward back side and not just side to side but forward and back and in a circle um, and so uh, we wanted him to be stable and uh, so that in case the ball kind of flew on from over him he's not going to fall. Um, so we're training his ability to um, have depth perception, be able to move his body while um, still having balance and regain depth perception quickly. And this is without using his finger, he can just cross his eyes and get those three um, circles together.
and he's hitting a ball at the same time. So he's using his periphery. And then with this one, he's also working on um, turning back and forth. So it's, it stimulates his um, balance the vestibular system um, by turning his head and still maintaining the balance. And um, this works for that visual motion sensitivity and being able to walk fluidly um, and being aware of that periphery. And it's also working on timing because he's hitting the ball and the ball is, um, he's estimating the speed in which the ball is moving even when he's not looking at it. So let's see. <laughs> so we also have another program at our office um, called the sensory learning program and it um, is a there's a video that I did a webinar um, just on this program that you can find on YouTube on my YouTube channel and just Google um, on the YouTube uh, sensory learning program, Susan Daniel, and you can find it, but it's um, integrates auditory, vestibular, um, ocular motor, which is eye movements, and uh, using different colored filters to balance the autonomic nervous system. And um, in many of our therapies, we use uh, this therapy in the beginning of the session and then do some of these other uh, traditional uh, rehab therapies that are more active and cognitive. And so this is uh, one way that we measure the uh, perceptual visual field. On the left, um, you'll see a bunch of colored dots in the center. That is where the patient is looking at the center. We're bringing a, a little circle that has a color and he has to tell me when he sees what color it is. And you can see the periphery, he's not aware of the color until it's right in the center of his vision. So his peripheral vision has very much um, collapsed. Um, after therapy, you'll see that now he's able to tell um, where the color is in the periphery and he's much more aware and much um, that peripheral vision has um, increased dramatically so that he's much safer. Um, and um, maneuvering through his world. So we learn by doing, um, you know, uh, a, lo a lot of uh, concussion research shows that uh, resting for the first few days is, after a concussion is very important, um, but then you need to move. Um, you need to start um, moving your body um, in order to get better. And um, because it's that interaction with our movement in, with the world that um, rewires it to, and uh, so that it can work the most efficiently. So this is a, um, a video of uh, the gentleman that you've been seeing, his name's Weston, and uh, that he uh, made for this webinar that tells you a little bit about his um, journey through this process. Um, my name's Weston and I've been concussed for 16 months now. It was excruciatingly painful every single day. The world didn't make sense to me. When I opened my eyes, it was just nonsense. Sound was painful and my lips wouldn't move to talk. I would spend every day in bed in the dark and even the smallest amount of physical touch was intolerable. I got depressed, was having suicidal thoughts. Uh, every day was full of flashbacks and mind numbing anxiety attacks. Every night was full of the worst PTSD nightmare you could possibly imagine. I never want to go back to that. Dr. Susan Daniel at Daniel Davis Optometry. 
during that session, she'll say, she said something that I'll never really forget. She said, uh, I'm so glad that you found us. I can help you. I believed her, but I didn't believe her. I had gone through so many horrible paths and I just didn't want to have hope again. In the first session of therapy was about five minutes long, because that's all I could handle. All I did was I read a few letters back and forth on a whiteboard. And I did some midline stuff. And afterwards, when I got home that day, I tried to get out of the car and I just collapsed onto the grass and I couldn't move. My brain hadn't been worked like that in so long that it just kind of just kind of said bye-bye. A few weeks after that initial evaluation and after a couple of therapy sessions, uh, Susan came to me and during this, oh, an appointment with her. And she went through essentially um, dietary guidelines. She went through what supplements I should be taking. She went through um, different meditation methods I could be doing, um, what might happen during all of this. She, and she, 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 just, she just laid it out for me. And she came to me and she's like, Weston, I am so excited because I have a laundry list this long of activities for the entire time of your therapy. It's going to be, it's going to be long and it's going to be hard. It's going to be six to nine months. Um, but you know what? We're here for you and you can do it. And I'm like, that is so cool. Can I see the list? And she said, no, Weston, because if I show you the list, you're going to try to do the entire list, and then you're going to end up on the floor again. And I said, yeah, you're right. Um, but that's kind of how it went with her and with my therapist, Melissa. Melissa was awesome. She was patient. She was kind. She, she pushed me. She, she was there for emails and, like, always just supportive and coming up with new stuff for me and hand in hand, because it was a team thing. It wasn't just Susan, it wasn't just me, it wasn't just Melissa, it wasn't just my family. It was all of us together. And that's really how I felt the first day I even walked into that place, because it, it felt like family. It didn't feel like a doctor. <laughs> so soon we added in sensory bed too, and that was like night and day. There was a separate video on that one, and I just, I love that thing, can't talk enough about it. And so it started out with, with a, a minute of homework a day, became two minutes and then three minutes and weeks went by and months went by and it turned into an hour and then two hours. It was like someone had taken my perception of the world out from the dirt, dusted it off and put it on a shelf higher than it's ever been. And the world just sunk and had this shine that I've never seen before. <laughs> Six to nine months was the estimate for how long it would take me to heal. And last week I graduated at five and a half. <laughs> We've been gone through vision therapy. And what would have been my normal for the rest of my life had I not met Susan? I would have been incapacitated compared to what I used to be. And that would have been my life. But now I'm going to be more than I've ever been. So all I can say is that if you're going through this, you aren't broken. You aren't alone. And you will get through this. Enjoy the process as much as you can. These people are here for you. Trust that the people
people around you care for you, and you'll get better. It's going to take a long time, but you'll get better. So, thank you for listening and just thank you. <laughs>